All right, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm going to show you Edius 9 editing an 8K project, which was prepared in Edius 10. Now, as I go through this, I will start kind of talking about some stuff as well as to the whole point of this thing. And also some of the questioning that I've got as to do with the differences between Edius 9 and Edius 10. And if indeed this is an actual upgrade or really is it an update? date because there are so many things so far that I've come across and that other people have also seen which would suggest that maybe things aren't a huge difference really between 9 and 10. Also I will be supplying a link for a tiny project that you can download to test this for yourself. I will get to that shortly but first of all let me just show you another project first. So here's a project which has actually got media in it, like video media, because the project that I'm going to supply doesn't have video media in, just to keep it tiny. Now, this one is a Edius 10 project. It's an ongoing thing that I'm doing because I'm doing some pretty cool stuff, or what I think is pretty cool stuff, which Edius 10 is now allowing me to do, and that is to work with 8K, whether that's 8K native upscaling to 8K, also export an 8K, and up to like you know 60 frames per second and stuff, because I've got a great interest in doing like post production for like gameplay stuff and things like that for YouTube. So at the moment. Edius 10 is just off the hook with these things. It is unbelievable. Anyways, just quickly, I will just show you what's going on in this particular project. Like I say, this is just a test project for now. And at some point, I will be doing what I think is a very cool thing, which is what Edius 10 is now allowing me to do. Anyways, so here is a piece of media in the timeline now this is being pre-rendered to hqx because at such high resolutions and frame rates unless you're working on a very very powerful system i don't think you're going to be able to deal with many codecs in real time at full resolution whereas hqx you can do and by the way i'm only on an intel i9 9900k here so let me just get into showing you some really cool stuff Right, so properties. So what we're, what we're at here is 8K UHD. Now, I'm just going to keep calling this 8K. We know it's UHD. We're at 60 frames per second. Obviously, it's the Grass Valley HQX codec. And, well, it's going to be 10 bit because of the HQX and the size. Now, what I'm going to do here is just show you the project Saturn so we know where we're at. Let's see. I'll go into the, the, the change mode here. It might be easier to see stuff. So as you can see, once again, 8K. We're in 60 frames per second. We're in 10 bits. Let's see, we're in 709. We're, we're only in 709 because that's all I need to be here. All the stuff that I'm doing as far as capturing, screen capturing, HDMI capturing, stuff like that, it's all 709 for all this type of stuff. So that's why I'm in 709. Also, I'm using HQX as my intermediate rendering as well. I actually have this set to maximum, so I'm, I'm maintaining as best the quality as possible, even even Jordan Temp rendering and stuff like that. Now, for the best part, you would you know this is what I would say would be a standard setup for such a project. Okay, so let me get out of that. So what we've identified is here so far is I've got a piece of media which is 8K, 60 frames per second, 10 bit and the project is that as well so let me just quickly play you this now as we're going to see here the frame buffer here is definitely saying that we're in real time now contrary to what this timeline indicator may or may not be suggesting this is definitely real time however and unfortunately you're going to be seeing a ton of frame replication there or what people would normally refer to as dropped frames now the problem here, and this goes along the lines of me questioning the differences between 9 and 10, is what you're seeing here is the legacy issue of the UI not being able to draw fast enough at higher, like, you know, higher resolutions and higher frame rates. I'm not going to get bogged down with this right now because I'm going to do a separate video about a number of the legacy issues that are still occurring in 10. But unfortunately, this one is still there. Now, if I go full screen, we're going to see it a bit easier. So as you can see there, that's definitely not 60 frames per second. The source is but that's not doing that. And it's just because of that UI overlay issue that we've had for a long time within Edius. Um, okay, so yeah, 
let me just move past there. Like I said, I don't want to get bogged down with that because I do want to be pointing out something very specific here. So what we've seen so far then is this is Def 8K. It's all work and it's brilliant and all the rest of it, aside from the UI issue. Now what I'm going to do is come out of 10. Now I'm going to open this project up in 9. Okay. Now by rights, we shouldn't be able to do this because, well, for two reasons. One, 9 and like you know anything before nine hasn't been 8k compatible other than a very specific license which i don't even know anybody anyone who's ever used it I've, i was informed of this when i made inquiries about 8k in the past with eddie there had been a special license which would unlock that function or or supply that function whether that was with a separate version of edius i don't know maybe it was only ever used in japan as well i'm not entirely sure about that but nonetheless up until 10 our standard versions of edius pro and workgroup have not been able to do 8k but right now we are now in 8k with edius 9 so once again, this is the exact same project. I'll just quickly flip through it. So there we go, 8K60 there. But importantly, if I go to project settings here, the project is identifying itself as 8K60 with all the same attributes that I'd had with inside this project when it was open in EDIUS 10. Now, if I go into change and settings here, interestingly, we're not gonna see anything to do with that actual resolution that was set within 10 and also we can't change render formatting either now neither of those two things are a problem because right now we we actually have the right setup here for this project to work correctly so despite the fact that edius 9 isn't going to identify these two things we're definitely seeing them because i'll show you now okay so as we've seen there that is all exactly the same now once again playing that media we're going to see the exact same thing as well as far as any issues to do with the UI and overlay. But as we can see down here with the frame buffer, it's all playing exactly the same as it had been doing in 10 as well. Now, interestingly, at this point, you might be thinking, well, OK, well, this is very interesting because we're not meant to be able to do this stuff within previous versions of EDIUS without, obviously, other than, you know, this supposed special licensed version. Now what I'm going to do is apply a filter because you would automatically think, well, maybe it's only partially working. Well, check this out. What I'm going to do now is add something which will definitely show us like a difference. Let's see the primary color corrector. And I'm going to do one of my famous David Harry grades here. So let me just ramp up the exposure because who doesn't like a blown out look? Let's see, let's just blow a bit more out. Let's ramp up the saturation for a laugh and then we'll put a load of gamma back down here, okay? So the whole point of doing this, what I've done right now, is not just to show that I can't color grade, but it's just to show that we've definitely got something different on the screen. Now at this point, this isn't going to play in real time. Let me just show you. As we can see there, the frame buffer now is staying down at one, so that can't maintain anything like real time. However, if I just drop this down a bit, let's just say a quarter. Actually, when I say drop it down a bit, a quarter in other scenarios wouldn't be a good thing to do because immediately your picture would just like really go badly. But because we are dealing with 8K here and because the UI and the actual part of the UI that's doing the overlay is even smaller than HD at this point, what happens is, even though we've dropped that down to a quarter, the actual impact on the visual resolution as to what we can see on the part of the screen for the UI that's doing the actual overlay actually doesn't look bad at all. There you go. And as we can see there, in fact, look at that. The motion's gotten better as well. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, th th this is how, how I have to edit, by the way. So rather than getting bogged down with the UI not refreshing properly, this is what I would normally do is drop down the resolution so that the UI can, can actually play the, the, you know, the frame rate correctly. But nonetheless, what we're seeing there is something that looks great resolution-wise, or at least it looks as good as it can do at such a size without any impact, despite the fact that we've dropped it to a quarter. And we're also seeing you know the primary over the top of it now don't forget this is all you know 
68k it this is actually quite phenomenal this is i mean i don't know maybe other people out there are just sitting there going come on dave you get excited by the weirdest of things maybe i don't think so i think from an editor's point of view i mean i'm not i'm not an editor by the way i'm just somebody who does post-production and um, but from an editor's point of view or anybody in post-production i i think you know once people actually understand what what they're seeing on the screen here the gravity of how important this is should not be missed by anyone. This is fantastic. But this is in Edius 9. Now this will do the same thing in 10. I've just, you know, just proven the point here in 9. Now, obviously there's other things we can still do, which we're used to doing. Let me just do a quick manipulation of the of the uh, layouter. I don't know if that'll stay real time. No. It's trying, but it's going to keep dipping down to the ones. Although, if I go to a an eighth there, mm, yeah, I don't know. We, we we'd probably get away with that. Obviously, not like punched in that high. Now, I'm not going to go too far more into any of this stuff here because I'm going to be doing separate videos about ten showing these things happening at 8k and 60 and all that type of stuff because like i say it is amazingly impressive and also just keep remembering here i'm just on a intel i9 9900k so at the moment because i am using hqx this is all cpu bound anyway which is exactly what edius has always been good at and this is proof of it right now so hqx you know 10 bit 8k you know 60 frames per second seriously i'm absolutely blown away and i will kind of go on about that in other videos but let me just cut this short now because i think I'll, i might run the risk of like missing the point with this video <laughs> okay so that's that project there you're just seeing all that happen it's and it's great although should it be doing that now what i'm going to do here I'm going to open another project now this project here is what i'm going to have available for download so there'll be links with the video and stuff uh, check the, des the descriptions you know for this video and whatnot and you'll see the link for this project as you can see here it's only 57 kilobytes in size so it's tiny it will be zipped as well so it'll be even smaller again right so what i'm going to do is open this up in 10. now l literally this is just basically something which has got like one piece of media in which allows me to generate the project at 8k so as you can see here it's got a title in it now the title is basically resolution independent so let me just show you here so project saturns in fact go to the this view of the saturns so once again it's exactly the same thing you know 10 bit 60 um, 8k all that stuff so it's basically as is the other project was but this time I'm I'm using a project which has only got a piece of media in which tapes takes up absolutely like no space at all. The thing is, even if I was to kind of mess around and use like a small HQX file at 8K60 and stuff and reduce the parameters to reduce the actual size and whatnot, it would still be like quite a quite a big file and I just don't want to be putting people off and downloading something that might be a bit too big for them if they're on slow internet connections but like I say this here is an 8k60 project with a simple asset in it which allows me to keep the project and everything around 50 60 kilobytes in size so easy to download now what I'm going to do here is open this up with nine and we're going to see exactly the same thing as what we'd already just seen but i'm just showing you that it works so people can actually you know do they know that if they download it this is what they should be able to see if indeed this thing is reproducible so once again let me just quickly go into the saturns nothing's going to change there we go 8k and all the rest of it 60. also again we still have the same caveat here with render format and frame size and not being visible but once again we already know it's all okay because we've already set it within 10 so we translated backwards to 9 here okay now what i'm going to do with this one is in fact i'll just go and straight out render so let me just go to hqx there's no need for me to hang around on this project because any of the real cool stuff you've already seen it happen so we know that nine will do a whole bunch of stuff with the media and whatnot so let me just call this um test three let me just save that out okay that'll take a little longer the timeline's just a little longer although you know this is this is another thing as well you know obviously depending upon your timeline assets 
exporting an AK60 within 10 uh, to HQX, it is honestly it is really fast you know the thing is it's just i know that there's going to be people you know who don't watch my videos and or they at least don't watch them all the way through but anyone who does when they get to parts like where i start getting like really excited about stuff if people don't understand why i'm excited about these things then there's probably something wrong with me but Honestly, if anybody does the kind of things that, you know, I would expect from an edit system and whatnot, and they could see this stuff happening, it is really important to, 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 to make the point that Edius is doing these things, and these are amazing things. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop gushing. I mean, the thing is here, I know I, I know people might be thinking I'm being critical of Edius, and I am, but I am an Edius fanboy. You know, I, 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 loved, I love Edius, and I've used it for a long time, and it's amazing and stuff. But the thing is, you know, I'm not blind. That you know, I do have to point certain things out when I see issues and whatnot, and I do have to question it. And hopefully, it's something that other people can appreciate as well. Now, there's that media that we've just exported. So, as we can see, 8K60 HQX. You know, everything is identical to what it had been before as well. Also that will just play properly as well we can see the frame buffer down there doing its thing we obviously can't see anything happening because there's no motion or anything there's no temporal characteristics to observe or anything like that okay so i think that's kind of round this up then so what i'm going to do is have a link to this project and what i'm interested to find out is does this only happen because I've got nine on the same system as 10? And on top of that, is that because it was nine work group and 10 work group as well? Now, with that, there would be another question because from what I understand, these two things live independently on the same system. So I can't see that once 10 has gone in, that suddenly, it has migrated some of its like attributes to nine. I don't see that that's what's happened here because they are two independent different installs that by all accounts and from what I can understand, don't share any common ground whatsoever. Because if they did, that was that is what would probably would could possibly lead to issues with the pair of them being on the same system. So I've got a feeling that what I'm observing here isn't because I've got EDIUS 10 on the system. It may well be to do with the type of license being used. I don't know, because this is one of those Pro Plus is it upgrades or whatever they were called, where I went through the path of upgrade and, and then had that dual license open. So this is one of those dual license things that have, you know, that well, a lot of people would also have these as well, where you can have like, you know, the same license share between nine and 10. So it could be as a result of that. However, you know, what I'm looking for here is to see if people who have got like nine and not got 10 or they've only got like nine pro or indeed lower versions of Edius like eight and seven, whether they can actually open this project up and see it and export at 8K. I'm just, I'm just really interested to see if this can actually happen with other versions. And again, the reason why is because, again, in, and, and, and in pure layperson's terms here, I just don't see where this huge difference is between 9 and 10. And yes, right now, I am questioning what 10 really is is 10 a total new version of edius because i don't think it is and is it could 10 have just been an up part of the update path for nine because if nine can open up all these projects right and as we've seen i mean i know i only used the primary corrector but it was using that on the 8k footage also 10 is suffering from a lot in fact, all of the legacy issues that I've tried out in 10 so far, 10 is still suffering with them. So really, what are the differences between 9 and 10? Now, I know people are going on like, oh, yeah, you know, there's this new modular approach. Well, you know, I, I'm not a particularly thick person. I may not be a software designer, but but I don't know what that means. What does modular approach mean? It, it, I, I mean, in its simplest terms, it probably just means you can make up a new thing and bolt it on. Is that really what it means? And if so, 
Could that not have been done to nine and let nine continue as nine until we had something which was substantially different enough to call it an upgrade as in the next 10 should have been? Because as far as I can see here, we're seeing exactly the same things that we've seen in nine and also previous versions of Edius, the good and the bad, we're seeing it both in 10. And 10 for me isn't really doing anything else other than maybe opening up some stuff that maybe nine could have done because so far nine definitely could have done this project um, nine definitely can't do nvenc but that's because nvenc if this new modular thing is how i understand it nvenc has just been a module added to 10. is this something that nine couldn't have done you know realistically i don't know like i say th this is just me spitballing a bit here but i just don't see there being that many differences and then also if we start looking at the things like you know compatibility with gpus and stuff like that you know if 10 is like going to become compatible with say nvidia gpus as far as the code and, and rendering is concerned basically the utilization of cuda and this has been suggested within the ideas forum or at least it has been alluded to if that is the case why was it just not there straight away when 10 was released in order to make 10 something that was definitely way different than 9 you know and maybe there are a few other things that 10 could be doing i mean the utilization of amd full stop really does seem a bit you know or the under utilization seems a little odd the total you know under utilization of any gpu assistance to do with anything meaningful as far as render into the timeline is concerned or render assistance or codec decoding i mean the other thing is here and i don't want to go off on one with this because i will do a separate video but i've used a number of gpus with edius and you know and this has been split between 9 and 10 and these have been low level ones like the gtx 1660 right up to the rtx 2080 ti now there is meant to be assistance for certain codecs the more esoteric ones like you know uh, the, like some of the quick time stuff apple raw and things like that and also red and i think i believe some of the sony raw stuff also gets a hand as well from gpu well here's the thing I didn't I didn't see or feel any scaling with some of that stuff that I tested you know with the different GPUs as well so right now like I say there's a there's a total under utilization within 10 as there was with 9 and again layperson's kind of perspective here does this suggest that there really isn't such a huge difference and again from a layperson's point of view if indeed 10 was a totally different beast and it had been all reworked, well, during that reworking, would it not have been an idea to have filtered out all the errors from the previous legacies of Edius, as in the likes of the screen overdraw and the consolidation functions and a number of other things that other people have always kind of like, you know, had issues with? You know, you've got to understand that different people have their different uses. But if you look across the board, you know, there's been a lot of like, you know, problems which people have always seen every time Edius has come to a new version. I would seriously have expected all that to have gone within 10 because I I was under the impression that 10 was, well, you know, brand new version of Edius and an upgrade, not an update. Anyways, I think, you know, I've made a few points there, you know, which people can have a little think about. And I will, I will indeed be delving into some of those points very specifically. And I'll try and do shorter videos in the future. The only problem is, is when you're dealing with stuff like this, you know, th th these are complicated bits of software and the issues at hand are not like two second you know things to discuss you know so that's the reason why i do meander a bit and unfortunately you know once you tug on one string kind of opens up a whole whole heap of other tugging of other strings as well but in the future i am going to try and do stuff which is maybe i don't know maybe less than 10 minutes long <laughs> if i can do it and st try and stay focused because there are a, a number of really positive things that i've got to do videos about to do with eddie's 10 and not least of all this whole 8k thing and working with i mean obviously it means it does require working within hqx as well 
But right now for the system that I'm on, other than anything that can totally utilize GPU, and even those things that do utilize GPU, like resolvers, for instance, you try doing some of this stuff, right, 8K60 on, on Resolve, and you, and you still have to have a, a particular version of it to do it. But you try doing all that with the harder to decode codecs such as H.265 and stuff, and I think you're going to find you're going to run into similar problems that most systems would do with those difficult codecs, which does, in fact, mean that for most systems to work on, like, you know, the super high resolutions and frame rates, you will have to utilize an intermediate or a production codec which is more suited to a particular NLE or post-production workflow. And obviously, in our instance, using EDIUS, ours is HQX. And as you've seen there, it is mental. It is brilliant. And I will be doing stuff about that in the future and a few other cool things. I'm rambling on again anyway. I'm going to get off. So don't forget, there's something to download. <laughs> Have a check of it and let us know what you think. I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.